uh, were considering surgery, that whatever's plaguing you is moving to and fro. The only thing that can move to and fro in your vision is something caught in your vitreous. In my experience, it's been effective in almost all cases. The risks are well-defined. The biggest risks that we have with vitrectomy, as in any other eye surgery, are blindness in, from infection or retinal detachment. With respect to those two uh, attributes, vitrectomy surgery is as safe or safer than cataract surgery, which is the most common surgery performed in the United States. Vitrectomy surgery should be and is performed only by retinal specialists. And this is a nice uh, image of vitrectomy. Uh, we've got a couple holes, if you will, uh, into the eye. Patients are usually uh, sedated, but definitely awake and completely comfortable. We make three entry wounds or in, uh, we make three holes into your eye, quite frankly. Uh, this is the vitrectomy instrument, which cu cuts and removes the vitreous. This is a light source. And then this is a, actually a plastic tube that keeps the eye inflated with artificial saline as it's being removed with this device. And slowly, we take little bites of the vitreous. <clears throat> um, and with time, 10 to 15 minutes, most if not all of the vitreous is removed during this vitrectomy or FOV. As I said before, the risks of vitrectomy or FOV are known. The biggest risk or the biggest uh, calamity would be blindness from infection. The chance of blindness from infection for FOV is somewhere in the order of 1 in 10,000 to 1 in 15,000. Compared to the chance of blindness from infection caused by cataract surgery, which is somewhere around 1 in 2,000. So vitrectomy is actually five times safer than cataract surgery in terms of contracting endophthalmitis or blindness from infection. The second most uh, worrisome complication is retinal detachment. Retinal detachments are caused by retinal tears. The chance of causing a retinal tear leading to retinal detachment is about 1% to 2%. And this is the same as anyone undergoing cataract surgery. So this is why I say that vitrectomy really is as safe as cataract surgery, if not safer. And there is a misconception there on the internet that this is just a horrendous surgery and that complications abound. And if you were to entertain this, blindness is likely. Vitrectomy is a relative, relatively new science. It was introduced in the late 1970s or early 1980s. And I think that the complications related to vitrectomy surgery way back then were higher than cataract surgery, although it helped many, many people, uh, although it prevented blindness in many, many people, uh, because it was really introduced to as a way to fix retinal detachments and patients uh, suffering from diabetic retinopathy. 30 years later, however, technology has made the surgery much safer, much more elegant, and is actually in some regards much easier to perform than cataract surgery. So there's a lot of misinformation there about vitrectomy. Uh, here again is an image about a posterior vitreous detachment. Um, I'm going to leave that for now. I think I was going to say something about the need for inducing a PVD, which I know a lot of you people want to uh, know, but I'm going to bring that up in just a few slides. Again, FOV or foveal uh, floater only vitrectomy is actually just a core vitrectomy. I perform a vitrectomy all the time, six, eight, ten times a week for a variety of causes to remove blood to fix a retinal detachment, to remove an epiretinal membrane, to fix a macular hole. In this case, vitrectomy to, vitrectomy to remove floaters has been coined FOV. Technically, it is the easiest thing that I do uh, in all the operations I do because all I'm doing is removing most of the vitreous, something that I need to do before I can actually work on the retina. 
one of the more common questions that I'm asked uh, on the blog is, do I induce a PVD? And I'm going to categorically say that I do not induce a PVD for patients that uh, need an FOV to remove floaters. I don't think there's any need to remove to induce a PVD because I think it increases the risk of causing a retinal tear. And again, if you if I cause a retinal tear, we may increase the chance of you uh, sustaining a retinal detachment, and that's really poor form. That's not in that's not our intention. What is concerning to me is that most people believe that if if you don't induce a PVD, what happens when you do get a PVD, which is a natural event? A PVD, a posterior vitreous detachment, eventually happens to everybody. Number one, understand that a PVD does not usually cause floaters, so that if you were to have an FOV or a vitrectomy, a vitrectomy to remove the floaters that you have now, there is no Nothing to say that when you do have a PVD, which may not be for another 10, 20, or 30 years, that you're actually going to cause floaters. Because most, while everybody does get a PVD, not everybody sees floaters. In fact, most do not. I'm also going to say that if you were to have a vitrectomy today, it may actually increase the time at which a PVD may develop in you because you're actually removing most of the vitreous so that there will be less uh, inertia or mass to cause a PVD later in the future. It's a little hard for me to describe online, but the point is that number one, even if a PVD were to occur, it may not occur for 30 years, and the PVD is not necessarily going to cause floaters anyway. Recently, the FDA approved a drug a drug called ochroplasmin. This is a drug which is injected into the uh, in the office. The indications are to cause perhaps a posterior vitreous detachment, which may relieve or cure a condition called uh, vitreomacular traction or vitreomacular adhesion. Um, the exciting part about this is that in those people that have vitreomacular adhesions, basically where the vitreous is pulling up on the macula, it may cause a chemical cleave or separation of the vitreous from the macula, and it may improve their vision. That has nothing to do with floaters. For some reason, ochroplasmin is expected to cause a PVD, which may get rid of floaters. And Causing a PVD in patients that are already suffering from floaters, in my mind, is either going to make the floaters worse, but certainly there's no guarantee that they're going to get rid of them. If you look at the data about ochroplasmin, the PVD is caused less than 50% of the time. Remember that ochroplasmin is given as an injection in the office, and every injection that we give in the office has a risk of infection. And the risk of infection of current drugs that we introduce into the eye or inject into the eye in the office, the risk of infections of those injections, I'm sorry they rhyme, is greater than vitrectomy. Whereas I'm advocating vitrectomy, if you really need it, is a much more definitive procedure and is actually safer in terms of chance of infection. And I will submit we don't actually know the chance of infection with ochroplasmin because it's just been uh, introduced. There's also the question about pre uh, floaters living or occupying the premacular bursa. And the premacular bursa is an area which is right in front of the macula. And I believe this concern stems from patients that have cons been considered for having laser therapy to break up the floaters. Remember, the laser focuses light energy into the vitreous so that if a floater which is residing very close to the surface of the retina is too close, I believe the doctor correctly decides laser is not indicated because that laser energy may actually hurt or cause damage to the retina because of the proximity of the target, meaning that the target, the floater, is just simply too close to the retina. This is 
not an issue with vitrectomy because with vitrectomy instrumentation, you can get within a millimeter or two of the retina and you can, you can easily remove any vitreous opacifications or floaters, which are right in front. So that floaters in the premacular bursa can certainly be treated with vitrectomy surgery. <clears throat> this is my last slide, believe it or not. This took about 26, 27 minutes. We've got about a half an hour for questions. Um, I'm going to email you contact information because I have your the list of all the attendees. Uh, my email address is rwong at retinaeyedoctor.com. I could not change the color of this to make it black, to make it easy, more easily readable, and I, uh, I apologize. I think Chrissy McGargy is in attendance. Chrissy, are you here tonight? You can type in yes or no. Um, she handles a lot of the arrangements for our out-of-town guests and can arrange surgery. Her email is here if you want to contact her directly. And again, I will be um, emailing you um, with contact information uh, sometime after tonight's uh, webinar. If you care to join us on Sunday, we're going to basically go over the same thing, but at 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I tried to accommodate as many different schedules and time zones as possible. Uh, for the 25 to 30 minutes that we have here, at this time, I would love to entertain questions. 